Hi folks, this is Jeffrey Fox. We're in here on part L of um, real, called Real Parallel Computing, i.e. last section, part K, did sort of analogies to demonstrate what parallel computing was. Here we actually have a shorter section of the realities of parallel computing. <coughs> and this is all part of the cloud computing unit of the Big Data Applications Analytics course. All right, next slide gives you the high points of, the, of this um, short lesson. We have uh, one slide from Judy Chu on SPMD and SIMD, the sort of overall architectures of parallel computers. MIMD is the other uh, thing, multiple instruction, multiple data, which is actually almost what everything is, SIMD is a special class of parallel computing. An SPMD, single program multiple data, is actually what most things are. You write one, as I mentioned in Hadrian's Wall discussion last uh, lesson, you write one program which uh, runs in on all parts of the problem and does different things because of different data and different boundary conditions. We then compare big data and simulations from a, a, a large, from a largest point of view, which is implicitly parallel. And then we discuss what codes are hard to parallelize. And we do that for both simulations and data. All right, this is really parallel computing in a nutshell. Thank you very much. And the final uh, slide from this uh, section, which is uh, slightly totally really quite different, it illustrates uh, Single program multiple data and also uh, a SIMD, single instruction multiple data. These are parallel computing technologies. All the parallel computing you will do, whether it's, uh, will almost always be single program multiple data and almost never single instruction multiple data. Although things like graphic engines internally to the inner core might do SIMD. And it's all a question of efficiency. Um, uh, SIMD was used initially because uh, if you just have one instruction engine and that instruction engine was sent to lots of different processing units, that was easier to implement than having MIMD, multiple instruction, multiple data, where uh, many, each, uh, each uh, process had its own instructions. But nowadays, almost always each, each process has its own instructions because each process is running independently. And it's sitting there doing its own thing on its own core. Um, but they tend to always be single program multiple data. When you do Hadoop, the maps are all <coughs> running the same code. They're not producing the same answer because they're, um, that same code is using different data on each process. And that data will have will invoke if statements in the code, and the code will be in different points in different, at a given time. So that, uh, these are just important concepts you should know about as you delve into uh, the future of uh, whatever we, we, we I mean, a, a big data programming on clouds. All right, that's it. That's the end of this uh, set of notes on, uh, on software. All right, so if we look at the classic features of parallel computing. Uh, then we will find that uh, we have SPMD, we have maps, which are um, in the case of simulations, uh, doing this, uh, say they're doing climate uh, weather simulations. There'll be mesh points divided up, and usually geometrically in three dimensions. And they all be sending little messages to each other to make certain the processors are uh, doing the, com the computing in this part of the weather can talk to the processors doing computing in the neighboring parts of the weather. And uh, often you use what's called a capability job, which is a giant job, which can actually use up to 100,000 cores on the same problem. And you run these in batch mode, jobs take a long time, and these machines all run at 100% utilization. Uh, they're very fault fragile, and if one node breaks, the whole system breaks. And uh, all the maps take the same time, because otherwise they have to wait if you have 100,000 cores. And one core is slow, you're doomed. Can't have that. All right, map produces different, because you can have stragglers. 
because all the strategies mean is you just have to wait for the final answer. Because if you have 99 processes and um, they all finish, one process takes 100 times longer, well, you just wait for it to finish. Those 99 are finished, you can reuse all those nodes to do something else. Um, whereas in the case of parallel computing in general, you cannot do that because the nodes have to do something, then they communicate, and then they iterate and come back. So iterative problems are much harder because you can't give up the nodes to be used by somebody else. And uh, we've already pointed out that uh, pleasingly parallel or map on is a special case. And then we have iterative map produced, which we showed as um, is the style three in the, of the various uh, six types of map produce in an earlier, um, earlier uh, slide. And uh, that caches results and supports uh, classic SPMD parallel computing uh, with uh, pretty reasonable with messages being sent back and forth between the nodes. So that's, and as this is linear, this is cla classic parallel computing for linear algebra, and most machine learning uses linear algebra. So, big data. You would think big data would need high performance because that's what big means. Big is high. So of course, we, I mean, although we talk about high performance computing, we could talk about big performance computing, and obviously big data needs big performance. And so, using HPC, big data should run faster. This is concept is called hyperscale, uh, and is a transformational technology according to to Gartner, and. Um, but it's a little more subtle because maybe the big data processing rolls lots of input output, leaves a lot of distributed data. And so quite how you accelerate that is not so clear. We have all these decently parallel jobs in the big data field, like processing data from CERN. This is the Large Hadron Collider, which is the big CERN accelerator. And these nifty HPC algorithms aren't used because you do what I call Local machine learning, every event taken by the LHC, and it does billions of them, are processed independently. Um, in a slightly more subtle case is map reduce. In fact, the LHC processing is map reduce uh, when you classify it properly and do the full algorithm. However, the largest part of LHC is map only, and that dominates over the reduced stage. Um, here's an interesting comment from Andrew Ng. He noted that. Uh, Every leading machine learning group must have deep learning and HPC excellence, because deep learning is HPC intensive. And um, as I've no noted before, things like topic modeling, clustering, dimensional reduction, <coughs> graph algorithms, they will involve a mix of map collective, map point to point, and they all have an iterative structure and they benefit from HPC. And when you use HPC technologies like MPI, the message passing interface, you run 10 to 100 times faster than classic big data technologies of Goop, Spark, Clink, and Storm. Well, another, in, if you look at the pleasingly parallel jobs now, uh, then we have parallelism over users and usages. Namely, um, a usage model is, um, the long tail of science. We're gathering data from lots of environmental sensors. Um, and that sort of contrast with big science, when a single accelerator or a single satellite is gathering data. And those are actually gives huge amounts of data sources. You actually split up the data. In the case of environmental science, the data is already split up. Um, and these are typically associated with individual researchers. Every researcher has a thousand things which they're deploying. So you get lots of things and lots of researchers. And clouds are very suitable for this problem. And it's often a map only use or possibly some map produce map produce. Because you want to summarize and collect together results of the different maps. So and then the difference between users and usages is probably best illustrated by search. In the case of a search, you can paralyze the search. That's the usage. <coughs> you can because you can search over independent uh, independently over all the different websites, all the different collections of websites. 
But these users can also run a separate search. So when you're Google, you actually have two forms of parallelism. Lots of users simultaneously searching, and each search can itself be done in parallel because you're looking over the entire set of data. And that data can be looked at independently and collected together. And so the exact choice of the parallelism, uh, users are always going to be parallel. You can choose uh, you can choose how you parallelize the search and how many nodes you run every search over. Um, here is a um, sort of cosmic summary of parallel computing for big data. And it just says everything is actually using the same basic idea. You're chopping up the model parts or the data parts. You're using one-dimensional, two-dimensional, multi-dimensional, super dynamic, super decompositions. And so you break the data or the model parameters into parts. You put each part into separate nodes. You use the owner compute rule, leaving the data untouched but changing the model parameters. Uh, these computations called a map and map produce is called the computation in MPI. And if that's you're doing increasingly parallel, then that's all there is except for managing the whole process. If it's globally parallel, namely you're doing a clustering. And you spread the data set over the nodes, and you spread the centers over the nodes. Then you have a truly parallel algorithm, which requires significant management of communication. And the final, and the nodes have to communicate because each are part of the problem. Then you use a particular communication mechanism, TCP, RDMA, RDMA native support of a high-performance network like Infinite Band. You're going to use different communication styles, point to point, collective, or publish, subscribe. Um, I described the issues of load balancing for the galaxy problem. Sometimes the best way to chop up the problem varies with time, with the data. And in the case of the galaxy simulation, the particles are moving around. And so the best decomposition change with time. Um, so you can have a fixed task with data fixed or Data flowing between tasks. You can have an automatic parallelism like a dupe, or you can have very customized parallelism where the user designs a sophisticated algorithm. Uh, we have different various algorithms. It can be decently parallel, which is simple, or complicatedly parallel. We have to worry about fault tolerance and how the data's output is also needs to be discussed. Um, but these are all roughly the same in all problems and all approaches. And what appears to be big differences are usually either mistakes or more often they're just a different type of problem. So if somebody is doing a piece in the parallel or a map reduce problem, they can do things in a very different way than somebody who has to do a large scale weather simulation. Okay, so this uh, is a slightly complicated slide, but it's trying to point out some similarities and differences between applications. Uh, which cover both simulations and big data problems. And a key feature which really determines how hard it is to implement and actually the software needed is sort of what I call here complexity of synchronization, which is sort of related to the parallelization because parallelism is linking different parts together. So it's synchronizing different components. And the problems that are hardest are the ones where it's pretty hard to make that synchronization efficient. So we have across here the top, the, the ones where there's little synchronization, so-called loosely coupled. In the middle, we have synchronization, but it's relatively regular. So we can do it pretty efficiently and, and straightforwardly. And on the right, we have complex coupling, which I have certainly put a lot of effort into and many people have. And each of these categories has entries from both simulations and big data. Over here we have, and by the way, this axis here is less um, precise, but it's in, roughly in the order of increasing data. So it sort of has simulations at the bottom and um, totally data, data management problems such as on commodity clouds with poor network connection and, and uh, running a dupe and things like that, that's up here. That's the map produce. And these are often so-called pleasingly parallel jobs where the, where the different components can run without any communication. It has so-called parameter sweep simulations where you uh, have a whole bunch of jobs and they're separated by having different parameters. 
In the case of uh, machine learning, that's called um, hyperparameter searching. Um, here we have in the middle of what you might call the heart of HPC clouds, where you have uh, this regularity, which you say would have in TensorFlow with traditional deep learning. Those are reasonably regular, rather clear how to get GPUs and vectorizing um, systems to run efficiently. And here we have the so-called global machine learning, where the machine learning is a single job running over many com nodes. And we have all conventional deep learning. And we have the regular simulations, where there's some sort of set of particles or mesh points, which are linked in a relatively uh, straightforward, uh, non-adaptive fashion. Then over here on the uh, right, we have the, some very hard um, big data problems, latent Richelieu allocation, that's a topic finding problem. Graph analytics, such as finding the number of graphs of a particular template. That's how they find fraud and terrorists and things like that. Then in simulation space, we have so-called unstructured adaptive mesh problems, where you have um, a, lot, a lot of mesh points or a lot of particles where those are dynamically changing throughout the simulation. We have uh, um, we have also, as well as the unstructured case, the structured case, and all of those are. This is somewhat, if it's structured, it's somewhat easier, but they all um, are hard. And often there's a lot of user involvement in the parallelization, because the user can understand this complexity, but they try to capture that complexity and the, of the parallels in the way that the compiler could do it automatically is quite hard. But in any case, there's not so much difference between big data and simulations. They're easy problems, hard problems, and sort of Pretty reasonable problems, which are maybe the heart of the of, the, of what you have to do with the ones that are really hard, not necessarily being the dominant workload. Okay, thank you.